appreciate everybody's understanding with making some adjustments today. It's kind of a, a mixed emotions day. We had a very good friend of ours from um, Ottawa, Ontario, who passed away last Sunday. She went to church, Violet Wilson. She went to church in the morning, and she passed away in the evening. And it's like, wow, 97 years old. She was such a blessing. Her and her husband over the years, for 18 years, they had come uh, to be here at New Testament off and on, uh, going back and forth by train, amen? And of course, uh, we have this dear precious family that God's brought, amen? God's done so many things uh, in our church, and uh, that's why I appreciate Sister Amanda Picky. To God be the glory, amen? Uh, it's not to my credit, your credit, it's to the Lord uh, of God of heaven, his credit, amen? And uh, that, you know, we have children, that God's given us salvation, amen? And all the blessings of this life, uh, we serve a great Savior today, amen? So let me open in prayer, and then I'll have the Ajala family come up here, and uh, we will do the dedication and so forth. Let's pray. Father, thank you again. Uh, for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we have to be together. Thank you, Lord God, for salvation, full and free. Lord, we ask now that you would bless and work in a real way, Lord God, that you would, uh, uh, God, again, touch hearts, touch lives. Thank you for uh, the technology that we have that many can see. Uh, Lord, even uh, the Ajala family, their family and friends, Lord God, can see what will take place today. And God, we look to you. We trust you. We thank you today. We pray that if there are anyone who is watching this or here in the house or online, Lord, and they don't know you as Savior, that you would touch their hearts, Lord God. Open their eyes. Open them to the truth of the gospel. And Lord God, uh, may you encourage us as parents today to, to, Father, train up our children in the way they should go. Lord God, you've given us a great responsibility. And God, help us, Lord God, with the stewardship of our children, Lord God, to be what we ought to be. So, Father, again, we just thank you and praise you uh, for your love, your goodness. Now, bless our time this morning, and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time, I'll have the family come up. Stand right in here, right in front of here, and I'll stand to the side. Man, Kiki, amen. Zion, praise the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. Abigail Grace, she's seven months old. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a blessing, amen. Oh, praise the Lord, amen. You can put them in front of you. I think they, they, the camera will see them, amen. Tell me if they're out of view, Elizabeth. They're all in there. Everybody's in the picture, so everybody can be seen here. Amen. Let me get my glasses, put them on, and I'll, I'll come in front there. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. You know, the Bible tells us, I'm going to read a couple of passages here. Amen. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that children are heritage of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, the word heritage there means it's an undeserved gift of God. Amen. Let me read that to you today. And... God has blessed his dear family with three children. Amen. 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 And that's such a blessing. Amen. It's uh, we live in a world today where people, so many people in our in our world, do not consider children a blessing, yeah. and that's unfortunate. Um, the Bible says in Psalm one twenty seven, except the Lord build the house, Amen. they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, uh, wake it, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Amen. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Bible says a heritage, an unearned gift, gift of God, amen? amen. 
And he says these children are like arrows. That's an interesting analogy the Lord gives us. Because we do our part as parents to train them, to teach them, to guide them, direct their lives. And so we want them as much as possible, like an arrow. We're pointing that arrow towards Christ. Amen? We're pointing them towards the Lord so that they will serve God. They will come to know Christ. Amen? They will serve Christ. That's our goal. That's our prayer. That's our desire as parents, as Christian parents. Amen? Amen. And we know that that's your desire today. Amen? Amen. These children, we, we say, this is my children, but when we really think about it, they're really the Lord's. Right. They're not mine. They're not yours. They're really the Lord's. Yes. God has entrusted us with children, and he's given us a great responsibility. Yes, sir. The challenges today in 2020 are very great to raise children in this, this culture, in this, this world that we're living in. Uh -huh. This is not an easy task. But the Lord gave us the word of God. This book transcends time and culture. And the principles that are laid out in the word of God are the same. They have not changed. The world keeps on changing, but God gives us clear wisdom and direction from his word how to train our children. How to raise our children. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 1, Elkanah and Hannah, they had little Samuel. And the Bible says they presented him to Eli, the high priest. In Luke chapter 2, verse 22, I believe it is, the Bible says that Mary and Joseph came to present Jesus to the Lord. Here we're presenting little Abigail Grace to the Lord. Amen. Mom and dad are here said, Pastor, please, we want to dedicate our little baby. Amen. We want to do it in the church, in house. Amen. And I touched my heart. Amen. So thank you for coming. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for your desire to see your children live for God. They are the Lord's, and your desire is for little Abigail Grace to serve God, live for God. Amen. Amen. That's what Amen. we want. That's what you want. And as you'll see, it, it's not just her, it's you as mom and dad and Abigail Grace together as a team to teach and train, to be the role models and examples that you should be for your children even, Zion and Kiki here, amen? So it's a blessing, amen. Well, listen, let's pray here, okay? Father, we do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you for... Little Abigail Grace, Lord God, we pray, Father, that you would, again, God, as mom and dad train up little Abigail, Lord God, that she would follow in the steps of Christ, Lord, that she would walk with you, that she would uh, live for you, Lord God, and God, guide and protect her, Lord God, and God, I just pray, Father, that you would use her. Use her in a great mighty way. Amen. We thank you for David and Elizabeth, Lord God, and their desire as parents to, to see Abigail and Diane and Kiki, Lord God, Amen. live for you. And God, we are so grateful for that and that desire in the mom and dad to train and to teach and to, Lord God, train up. Amen. So, Father, we do ask you today, Lord, we know she is yours, Amen. Lord God. Lord, none of our children are our own, but God, you've given us, you've entrusted us. Help us to be good stewards Amen. of your blessings, your gifts from heaven, Lord God. So God, we do thank you. We do praise you. We thank you, God, that you brought this dear, precious family from Nigeria, Lord God. God, it's been such a blessing to have them here. And Father, we pray you again, protect them, guide them in their walk with you, Lord God. And Father, that you would uh, bless them. God, give them wisdom from on high. Amen. And God, in these days that we live in. And God, we will only turn everything back to you Amen. to give you all the honor Amen. and all the glory. Amen. For we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. here to kind of help uh, not just the Ajala family, even though this
this is the this service is really surrounding little Abigail Grace and mom and dad that want to raise their little one for Christ. But it's important for us as parents, and even if you don't have children, to understand uh, the great responsibility we have as adults uh, in raising children and to be uh, an example to other children uh, that God puts in our path, whether it be us in the church or outside of the church, amen? So we need to keep that in mind. And uh, so anyway, I'll be looking this morning at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and giving you some, some thoughts here from the Word of God to help us as parents and to help David and Elizabeth as they raise their children. Amen. And again, it's, it's such a blessing uh, for their heart's desire. Amen? Amen. Let me read a passage of Scripture to you this morning, and then uh, we'll pray again. Asking the blessing of the, the word of God. Amen. And again, uh, what a blessing today. Thank the Lord. You know, every child that is born is a miracle of God. Amen. It's a miracle of God. Science in our world is still trying to figure out this whole thing about conception and birth. And we're still learning, you know. So we, we as God's people, we respect life in the womb, amen, and outside of the womb. The world today, we've seen it change over the, over the decades that people in our society, many do not respect life in the womb. We believe abortion is murder. That's what the Bible teaches, amen. We respect life. We need to respect life in those senior years. We're seeing euthanizing and euthanasia in the senior bracket and assisted suicide. Wow, we have come to tumultuous times. Boy, I tell you, regard for life. People are made in the image of God. Amen. They're made in God's image. Amen. Little Abigail Grace is made in the image of God. You're made in the image of God. We're not just a bunch of animals acting out an evolutionary cycle. We are human beings. God's creation. Amen. And we're ever so grateful for God and his word and salvation. Amen. Amen. Let me read Deuteronomy chapter 6 to you. I'll read a portion of it, and then we'll get into the uh, lesson this morning, and hopefully and prayerfully, God will touch your heart this morning. Let me go over there. I got to get to Deuteronomy 6. <clears throat> this is a familiar passage. If you're saved, you know Christ this morning. Uh, you know, you've read this passage, a very powerful, powerful passage of Scripture and, uh, and for parents and for children, amen, and how we raise our kids. Verse 6, of, or verse 1 of Deuteronomy 6. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, <clears throat> that you might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all of his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou, thy son, thy son's son, and all the days of life, that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily. As the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land which floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Now watch this. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up, and then and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on thy gates." Let's pray. Father, again, bless your word. Bless our time together this morning. And again, God, we just pray for not only just Abigail Grace today, Lord God, but for other parents represented here in this building and online. And God, the many challenges that we face in this day, and we thank you that we still have 
the instructions we need, the principles we need to raise our children in a manner that would be pleasing unto you. Now, Father, we ask your blessing on this day, and we ask that you would touch hearts and meet with needs, and especially for maybe that one, that person who might not know you, open their eyes and their heart to the gospel, and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Many of you know in this passage of Scripture, um, the nation of Israel, God's earthly physical people, um, are preparing to enter into the promised land. Deuteronomy is basically, how can I say it? It's the twice second giving of the law, but what it is is it's a preparation. It's they're preparing the new generation. What happened was everyone that was 20 years of age and upward has now passed on. Can you imagine the parents and grandparents that died in the wilderness because of their unbelief to trust God to cross the Jordan River, amen? And to and to to do that, to obey God. Well, that didn't take place. God brought judgment upon that older generation. So now we have the younger generation. Moses is still alive. He's not going to enter in the promised land. Numbers 20 tells us that what he did was he struck that rock twice, and God judged him for that. God was angry with Moses when he did that. He didn't obey God, and he says, you will not enter in. But I'll let you go up to Mount Pisgah's lofty height, and I'll let you look at what you could have had. And he lived to 120 years of age. So here he is, he's, he's reiterating, he's giving it again to that next generation that's grown up. And, and he's going to remind them here, listen, can we learn from our history? Can we learn from our past? Can we learn from what, what your parents uh, ended up with and how they, how they were judged in that land? And he was reminding them of that. And these ones that he's speaking to, they have children now. And they've been wandering in that wilderness for that 40-year period of time. And now it's time to cross over. In the book of Joshua, the Bible tells us Joshua is a picture of Christ. will bring them into that promised land. And uh, so uh, in the beginning of this book, and so many things, many of the principles that are taught here are, are mentioned in, in Numbers and in, in Exodus and in Leviticus and so forth. And so he's given it again. Because as I've said in my Sunday morning studies that we just finished up, we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded of truth because we all, we all have a problem. And that problem is that we, we, we have a tendency to forget or not be, that's why we need to be reminded of the truths that God has given us. So in this passage of scripture, I'll give you some thoughts here on it. The verse is one and right down to verse five, the Bible is basically giving us today, telling us through this passage, he's speaking to the parents. So when we talk about dedicating, I may need to under, make sure people understand, what we just did now is, is not, uh, you know, in some religions they have a baby baptism. That's not what that was. We have prayed for little Abigail, mom and dad's desires for her to serve the Lord and live for God and come to know Christ at a young age, amen? That's their desire. That's their desire. And um, this is just a matter of mom and dad saying, I want to dedicate, I want to present my child to the Lord and say, she's yours, Lord. <clears throat> she's not mine. She's yours, amen? She's yours. And we need to do that. We need to do that. My wife used to have a picture, and it's a picture of like Christ on his throne there. And here's a parent at the bottom, and there's this staircase, so to speak. And the problem that we face sometimes is we fail to realize that we need to let go because they are the Lord's. They are the Lord's, amen? They're not our God's entrusted us, as I've already mentioned. So what he's doing is the importance of the first part of this chapter before he talks about being diligent in training your children is he says, Mom and Dad, how can we be diligent in teaching and training our children to live something, to believe something that we do not live and believe. We as parents must live and believe those truths. If we're going to have the, the effect on our children's lives, it will be really important for us to live these truths out and not just tell our kids, as in our modern culture, I know in North America, 
sometimes we don't say this verbally, but we kind of mean it. You know, don't do what I do, do what I say. No, no, that doesn't work. We need to show how to do it, how to live it. Amen? And we should not be hypocrites as parents. And so in order to see our children, even as we've read in this passage, to love the Lord thy God, in verse 5, with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might, he's telling that to the parents. You need to do that. You need to love God with all your whole being if you're going to have an opportunity to even train and teach your kids so that they will love God with their whole being. We need to show that example. It's interesting in verse 2, there's about three generations listed there. The Bible says that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou, thy son, and thy son's son. So you can see at least three generations. You might think of four, possibly. So, for instance, this morning I would assume family in Nigeria, wherever the Ajala family is, maybe grandparents, amen, they got to see this. They got to see, you know what? We have the opportunity, even as grandparents, to help our children with their children or our grandchildren. And it's important for us as grandparents to make sure that we are showing the right example to our not only our children who are adults maybe, but to our grandchildren who many times, I know I have the blessing that our grandchildren all live in Halifax area, but not all grandparents have that opportunity and blessing, and it's hard. It's hard for many that do not have a grandmother and a grandfather present, amen? It doesn't mean you cannot, you cannot, um, uh, uh, you know, that they cannot have a proper effect upon them, but it is challenging. But I've been blessed to have my grandchildren here, here in this church, and here in the Halifax area. And so I don't take that for granted. I really don't. And so it's important for us to understand that we have, our, our responsibility doesn't end as parents. These children, if the Lord tarries, Abigail Grace, Zion and Kiki, will may become parents someday. And you know what? They may, they all have children. I, I You know, Lord willing. And then... Elizabeth and David will be grandparents. I'm trying to, I'm not making feel you make you feel old this morning. <laughs> Amen. But I don't know. I believe Jesus is coming back. Do you believe that this morning? I believe he's returning. He's coming. He's coming. And but the reality is we need to continue to be faithful. And what this world needs is parents who keep on striving and it's it's a, it's a challenge. It's a battle to raise kids in this world this morning and we need to do that for the for the future because listen these children and these our grandchildren i pray and hope that they go on and serve god they live for christ and that they reach people with the gospel amen and that they get married to godly people christians amen that's the lord's will and so that what so that this can continue on generation after generation after generation. Unfortunately, even when you go to the book of Judges, I'll just read something to you. You don't need to turn. I'll give you the reference if you'd like. In Judges, the Bible says something so sad. You know, after they conquered the land and they came in the land, the Bible says in verse chapter 2, verse 10, and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Listen, you know what? When you study this thing, you'll find out, again, there's three generations. And we, I don't take it for granted. There came to a place that after that next generation in Deuteronomy, there were children that didn't even know God and did not even know what God had done for his people. 
We need to, listen, I, this, this history thing, and again, I don't want to harp on that. In our culture, in our society, in North America, I don't endorse any wrongdoing of any uh, his, uh, historical figure in our culture, in our society, but we need to remember, and we need to look back and say, that's good behavior, that's bad behavior, amen? And we need to be able to discern that. These people, these children, and these grandchildren, it came to a point they didn't even know what God had done for their, their great-grandparents. That's a sad place to be in. Now, my grandchildren here, I, I'm trying to even think if they remember, maybe Charity might remember, Grandpa Parrot. I don't even think she ever met Grandma Parrot. Of course not. You know, and of course, my, on my wife's side, the only ones that would have known it would be my kids. I mean, so, but you know what? I have tried to keep, you know what? I didn't say, you know what? Um, I want to serve God like my dad. That's not a wrong statement if your dad is serving God. But what was more important, I just want to serve God. I want to live for Christ. Because I, I, I understand the importance. And it's not just about my kids or my grandkids. It's also about the Lord. As I've said on Wednesday night, God sees everything. He knows everything. There's every secret in our lives. He knows. Nothing is hidden in the sight of God. It may be hidden uh, from each other in this room and from in your homes, in your families, in your marriages, but it's not hidden to God. God knows it all. And I want to be consistent I don't want to be up and down. I want to be consistent. I want my kids and my grandkids to say, it's worth it all. It's worth to serve Christ. I don't, want to, I don't want to blaspheme the name of Christ. I don't want to be a discouragement from my children and my grandkids serving God. I want to live for Christ. I want to finish my course. Amen. I want to finish it. Praising God. Thanking God. I believe Sister Violet probably did that. I was thinking back about that, you know. Mrs. Eleanor Wicks and Violet went to New Brunswick Bible <laughs> Institute together. I think it was back in the 50s. Like, come on. There's even a picture in Eleanor's living room. I think it's still there of the graduating class. What, what a testimony. What a, what a legacy to leave behind, amen? What are we going to leave behind as parents? A good testimony, a good legacy, amen? Listen, there's hope. There's hope today. In the midst of all the difficulty and the challenges and the sin and wickedness, the Lord tells us in that Philippians 2.15 passage that we can shine as lights in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. We can. We can. God's word is true. And if we're not accomplishing that, it's because we're missing the mark on something. There's something we're missing. We're missing the mark somewhere. Amen? So these generations, generations, you know, as I think about this situation this morning with the Ajala family, and I think about my situation, your situation, you know, again, if you have opportunity, generations, amen? generations of family members that are good godly examples that can have a pronounced effect on the lives of your children amen and our grandchildren those are the people that i want my kids and my grandkids to be influenced by amen i want you to think about this too and i've said this so many times uh, if you want second timothy chapter one second timothy chapter one and then we'll get into the diligence aspect in a minute here. 2 Timothy chapter 1. If you remember Paul the Apostle, he wrote three letters to pastors. One was to Timothy, pastor at Ephesus. The other is Titus, who's pastor on the island of Crete. And they're such powerful epistles. They're personal epistles. But you know, we're reading someone's letter, and we can learn from reading that letter. 
Because it's inspired scripture and God, we have it in the canon of scripture of 66 books in the Bible. And we just, so when we look at this, Verse 5 of 2 Timothy 1, the Bible says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith. So if we're going to see God work in our children's lives, we need to have unfeigned faith. What's unfeigned faith? It means not to fake it, not to pretend as a parent, but to make your faith real before your children. Amen? Amen. Listen. I'll just say this, and I, I, you know, I, I believe in personal, private prayer and Bible time, but it would not be wrong, we're not saying for show, for your children to see you reading the Bible and praying and even praying together as a family. See, we want our kids to serve God, but what are we doing as parents? What are we doing in leading our children and showing this is the proper manner of a home and raising children. When you, if the Lord tarries, as I've said a few moments ago, and you are old enough, you get married, and you have children, this is what you should do in your home. Because it's good, it's helpful, it's right. It's, it's, gonna, it's preparing again for the future. We're not just looking to today, we're looking to the future. And I know not everyone has that opportunity in their marriage, in their home, to do what I just said. But let me tell you something. I guarantee if you're saved, you know that is what God wants. And I hope and pray that's what you want for your home and your family. Amen? So in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, he says, Paul is saying to Timothy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, he says, I saw your faith, Timothy. I saw how strong your faith was. But where did that come from? (laughs) Where did that come from? How How was that developed in your life, Timothy? You know how it was developed? Read the rest of the verse. The Bible says, that dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois. Grandmother. Grandfather. They see that faith. So we got three generations. We got Timothy, we got Lois, and we got his mother, Timothy's mother, Eunice. And he says, you know what? Your grandmother was such a faithful, steady believer in Christ. And she had such an effect on your life, Timothy. Timothy, I'm not saying, you know what? Some people get this idea. All the kids got to be missionaries and pastors. Listen, that's not true. I would never discourage Children, if that's their desire, and, and try, you know, work with their parents and understanding what it means and, and all. I would never discourage anyone going to the ministry. But we must understand, without getting to a whole Bible study, what the word vocation is. Do you know, I believe that whatever job you have should be unto the Lord. The Bible teaches that. That's a calling, vocation. I believe you ought to pray If you change jobs, you ought to pray and ask God for wisdom and direction. See, we think, oh, if you're just going to be a missionary pastor, we got to pray about where to go and what to do and all. No, you need to as parents. Where are you going to live? Where if you move, decide to move, you take on a new job. You need to bathe that in prayer. This is not something we should take lightly just because you're not so-called called to full-time ministry. So. He says there, unfeigned faith. He saw it first in Timothy's grandmother, and he says, and thy mother, Eunice. And he says, I'm also persuaded that in thee also. He says, I'm persuaded. (laughs) Oh, isn't that a blessing? Grandparents have faith that know Christ. They live for God. Children, amen? They have gotten saved. Now they have children. Amen. They get married. They have children. And they have an unfeigned faith. And now the children, the grandkids, all those generations. Listen, do you know how that's going to work? It must be unfeigned. What does that mean? Again, it must be real. It must be genuine. We must be consistent in public as well as in our homes privately. And if we are not, the children see that. They say, mom and dad, one way in church, one way at home. That is not going to help develop that unfeigned faith. 
that your children and my children and my grandchildren should display as believers in Jesus Christ. Oh, this is so important. So important. And what happens? Go to 2 Timothy, same book, chapter 3. Chapter 3. Many of you are familiar with this, this whole passage here. So Paul, again, is encouraging Pastor Timothy in the ministry. He's a young pastor. And there's many challenges in Ephesus. Amen? And, and he needs help, and he needs wisdom, and he needs direction from a, a missionary, Paul, who God has used in such a great and miraculous way. I mean, the amazing thing from Illichrim to Jerusalem, I've showed you the map. If you've been with us over the years, the area that God used Paul and those he led to Christ to lead people to Christ and had such a great effect without all the technology we have today. We think, i got to have all the technology to get the gospel. No, you can do it without. Yes, there's challenges. I'm not against it. I use it. That's how people are online. I'm using the technology. But Paul did it without. He did it without a car. He did it without flying by plane. Oh, and he even got shipwrecked on a boat a few times. <laughs> but God used them in a great mighty way. So watch this. He says in verse 14 of 2 Timothy 3, But continue down the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Say, how much are these kids getting? I don't know, but keep them under the preaching and teaching of the, of the Word of God. How much are they under? I don't know. They need to be under the preaching and teaching of the Bible. I, you know, I'll do a devotion, Pastor, but I don't know how much they're getting. You would be surprised how much they're getting. You need to keep on doing that. You need to pray together as family. You need to read the Bible together. It doesn't have to be a long lesson. It doesn't have to be my, my kind of like my preaching here. Just say something. Read a scripture. You say, when can we do that? We live in a busy society. Do you eat together? I hope so. Amen. Yeah, raise your hand if you know. <laughs> I hope so. We live in a, such a busy society that we're even finding in our culture in Canada, I can't speak for outside of North, in North America, Canada, U.S., where people don't even eat together anymore. We all got our own schedules. We're so busy. The Bible tells us in Paul's letter to Timothy that the food that you eat is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. That would be a good time to read a scripture, say a few words, Dad, and be the, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and pray over the meal. That would be a good thing, because the Bible gives us that example. You say, we don't have a lot of time, we're busy. I understand, but you better make time. You're going to be make big time, because you're going to have some regrets someday and say, I should have listened, I should have done that. You don't want to live a life of regrets. You don't want to do that. You need to start now, if you haven't been doing that, Amen. He says, from a child, you've known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You know what? When we're, we're raising our children, we surrounded them with as many godly influences as possible. Some people say, well, you know, they never seen the sin of this world and the wickedness when they were growing up. The Bible says that you're supposed to be simple concerning evil and wise unto that what is good. Think about the garden. God gave him everything that was good. And he said at the end of the, of the week, everything was very good. What did they have? The knowledge of evil. If you know good, you know the right, you know what's evil. You know the evil. Amen? But, you know, some people, you know, we, I remember in Bible school, we had cults class, cults class, where we study the cults. We find out, you know, what do they believe, and wh why do they, where did they get this from, and who are their leaders, and all that. I'm not saying there's no, there's no uh, good in that, but let me tell you this. What would serve you even better is to know the truth, the Word of God. And if you know the truth, you'll be able to detect the error. Amen? Now watch this. He says, Timothy, you know the Holy Scriptures. It made you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in truth. Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 
Wow. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to wrap up now. I want you to see this passage here, and this is a very critical passage. I pretty much covered all the things that I believe I needed to. And again, just trying to, you know, encouraging the Jala family and raising their children, raising Abigail Grace. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. But at the same time, your kids, your grandchildren, if you're old enough to have grandchildren. Amen? For you who are watching online, some are working with their great-grandchildren. You ever think of that? Sometimes you can go four generations. Four. It's a rare occasion you can go five. Someone's way up in the years for five. Amen? But four? Hmm. Can you imagine? Let me read this. Verse 6 of Deuteronomy 6. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. So he says, have you listened to me? Have you realized that you need to be a good role model so that your children will be encouraged to live this life that is pleasing unto God? Because you're not just preaching something to them that you're not even following yourself, but no, you're consistent. You're telling your kids to live this way. And here's the way you should go, Deuter uh, Proverbs 22, 6. Here's the way you should go. Here's the way you should go. And you're trying to point them, as I read earlier in Psalm 127, like arrows and your quiver, and you're pointing your children, live this way. Listen, it's worth it all. Amen? I talked about grumbling and complaining last Sunday night. You know one thing that will discourage your kids is if you grumble and complain about the Christian life, and you grumble and complain about Christians. Oh, those Christians, you know. Some of our young people down through the decades have gotten away from God because of some things Christians have said and done. Not good, not right. But we can get through those times without quitting on God and quitting church and quitting the Bible and quitting prayer. We don't have to trash God because someone else did. God is still real. God is still good. He's a great God. He's worth serving. He's worth everything. And he says there, and thou shalt parents, adults, grandparents, whoever you are online, thou shalt teach them diligently. Remember what I taught in the 2 Peter 1 study? The diligence. Diligence. You will be diligent in any area that you enjoy and that you love. You will be. You love your children. You care for them. We need to spend time with them. We need to listen. You say, I, the, the, the phone is, it, the notifications are driving me crazy. If you have to, I can give you the directions how to do this. Go to Canadian Tire. Go buy a lockbox and put all your devices in there for your time of prayer and for reading the word. And take a break. If that's necessary, do it for the sake of your children. I'm not against technology. I got all the technology. I got the tablet and the PC and the cell phone. But I don't want this stuff to control my life. Notifications, we can get to them. Just like back in the old days. We had a phone. I had to wait till I got home before I could even check my message because it was on a little recording device for my phone. And it recorded the message. Yep. And then we got the technology where you can actually call your answering machine remotely. That was, wow, that's like, tech, oh, wow, that was exciting. Now we got a thing in our pocket that's constantly going ding, 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 ding. It's like, what's going on here? And your poor kids... They're, they want someone to love them and care for them and spend time with them. Someday, listen now, your kids will be gravitating to those people who have a listening ear. And they're going to listen to somebody as they grow up. I hope it's your voice. I hope it's the voice of God. I hope it's the word of God. I have found, as I've said so many times, that children are more apt in this social networking. Even little kids today have cell phones when they go to school. I can't believe it. 
they're more apt to listen to their peers than their parents, unfortunately. Their best friend outside of Jesus Christ ought to be their mom and their dad. They ought to look up to you. They ought to have respect for you. They ought to love you and care for you. Amen? That has to be taught and trained. That's diligence. Amen? Talk of them when thou sittest in thy house. When thou walkest. So when you're sitting, you're walking, you're lying down, you're rising up. When you put them to bed, pray with them. Talk to them. Boy, if, you know what? God wrote this before technology even existed. No matter what posture, standing, sitting, laying down, rising up, put it before them. Put some scripture before them. Put a verse on the mirror in the bathroom. <laughs> Have scripture signs in your house. Some people put them on their front lawn. That's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why I do that. But we'll put all kinds of things out there in this world in front of our lawn. Amen. It's what he wants us to do. Let me just wrap up with this and we're done this morning. Go to Romans chapter 12. So what we did at the beginning of this service is we took, say, Abigail Grace. Dave and Elizabeth said, we understand this is a precious gift from God, a little baby here. This baby's not ours. It's the, she, she's the Lord's. She's the Lord's. Your children are not yours. They're the Lord's. We don't own anything. We are just stewards of everything. The money you have, it's not yours. It's the Lord's. It came from the hand of God. You don't own anything. We're just stewards here. Amen. So we understood that. And we look to God and say, God, we, our desire as parents is to, we're presenting her to you, Lord. We want her to live for you. We want her to serve you, Lord. That's our desire. I hope that's your desire too. That's why we're doing this thing publicly. To encourage you. And you say, listen, is it too late, Pastor? No, it's not. It's not too late. Maybe you need to change some things. But before we can do that, so when they presented Jesus in the temple there, amen, they presented him to the Lord. That's what they did. Are you ready? I guess I got to turn there. I thought I turned there. Romans 12. You're waiting on me now. That's why I said to David and Elizabeth, number one, we need to present ourselves to the Lord. Amen? We need to, look at this. Are you ready? Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, and I've said so many times, from chapter 1 through 11, this is a, one of the greatest therefores. If you understand the transition and the teaching that Paul has given to the Christians at Rome, you say, so much powerful. He builds a case. Amen. This, this book, it's a law book. The Romans and the Bible is a law. This is a book of law. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, Paul says, I, he's begging, he's, he's pleased by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God's such a reasonable God. He would never expect or have any expectations upon you or me that are unreasonable. He is reasonable. God says, okay, you want to present your children. And I know Dave and Elizabeth have presented their lives. They want to serve God. They want to live for Christ. Do you? You have children? You have grandchildren. Do you want to live for God? Do you want to serve God? You need to present yourself first. You present yourself, then you can present your children to God. But you must do your part first. We can't expect, we want God to do everything when we're not doing our part as, as parents and grandparents. He says, present your bodies. A living, not a dead side. Oh, you know what? If really got tough, you know, I, I would die for the faith. And I, I would, you know, I, 
If you're not living for him, you won't die for him. Live for him now. Don't wait till things get really hard. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Present yourself. Children, you better obey and honor your parents. You're old enough to understand what I just said. Obedience and honor. Obedience, action. Honor, attitude. <laughs> Both. Attitude, respect. Respect. We need to teach our kids this. Respect. Respect for your authority and other adults. I was taught that. I believe it. I taught our kids that. And for the most part, from what I could see, they're trying to teach their kids respect to adults. Respect of parents. Amen? That's what we need today. That's what we need today. But I better respect people to show the right example so they would understand I respect authority. Amen? With all this stuff going on in our Atlantic Canada, across Canada, across the world, our first reaction ought to be to pray for these leaders. I, I might not agree with all of their decisions, but if I haven't prayed, why would I be bad-mouthing them if I haven't used the same tongue? That's, he says in James, blessing and cursing comes out of the same fountain? How can that be? Bitter waters? Sweet waters out of this? How can that be? First word should be, like I said last Sunday night, pray for them. Hold it back. Pray for them. Amen? Well, listen. I pray today, you online here, very important principles. Simple, simple, but sometimes the simplest, most basic things in the Christian life are sometimes the, the greatest of challenges. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, let's all stand. We're going to close in prayer this morning. Thank those for connected and joined us this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. All over the world. People able to watch and see. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, again, we do thank you. We do thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of salvation. Lord God, we pray for those who have not received Christ, that you would touch their hearts, open their eyes to the truth of the gospel. Father, we pray for believers today, especially those, Lord God, who are, have children or grandchildren trying to help their children, raising their kids or parents just raising their own. God, to train them up, to teach them, to be diligent in that. Help us to be diligent. Help us to be as, as diligent in that as we are in areas that, Lord God, we just, we just love so much. Help us to also transfer that diligence over to, Lord God, our children. Lord God, they need our love. They need our attention today. Now, Father, we do pray for each and every one represented here and online, Lord God. Parents, grandparents, children, grandchildren, and beyond. But we do pray specifically for the Ajala family. And God, we thank you for their desire. May, Lord God, your people all have that great desire to see their children serve you and live you, Lord. Live for you. We pray for David and Elizabeth as parents. Amen. And we do pray for their children, Zion, Kiki, and Abigail Grace, Lord. God, again, just help them. Give them wisdom and direction, Lord God, as they grow up, Lord God. And God, just again, that they would be fruitful servants unto Jesus Christ. So, Father, we look to you this morning, and we do thank you, and we do praise you. And as we sung earlier, to God be the glory. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.